The fifth thing that always happens in a closing society is that there's increased infiltration of citizens groups, and this is against the law. The ACLU has many documented cases of illegal infiltration of groups just like this, and in fact, there's probably someone here today. Hello, <laughs> you know, I hope your audio is working well. In 2004, at the Republican National Convention, the New York police spied illegally on anti-war protesters. There were also reports that the FBI was illegally spying on other nonviolent groups of Americans, meeting in churches and in Quaker houses of worship. documents obtained by the ACLU reveal that undercover cops infiltrated local groups opposed to the death penalty and the war. The internal documents show that nearly three dozen times undercover state police officers covertly took part in protests like this one in November of 2005. Sports writer David Zirin was part of a group that successfully pushed for a moratorium on the death penalty in the state of Maryland. What he didn't know was that the state police had sent undercover agents to monitor this group of American citizens' legal activities. In the meetings was somebody who was known to us as Lucy. And Lucy would sit there, she was, the word that keeps coming to mind was uh, peppy. Like she would sit there with a big smile on her face and ask lots of questions and take notes. It was always the most basic questions, like, wow, why are we doing this? Why about, like, the kind of questions that you're happy that somebody who's new to a group asks. And he found out later that it was Lucy who was the spy. It's obvious that they made the conclusion that nothing illegal was going on here, and yet they continued to monitor our email list. They continued to come to our meetings. That's the thing that's so upsetting about this, is that this idea that some people deserve to be watched and some people don't. People should ask that question about, well, where is my homeland security uh, money going? Is it actually being used to keep us safer or is it being used to stifle dissent? We know that when you go to your anti-war group or your environmental group, there may well be someone there, and this is right out of COINTELPRO. We did this in the 60s and 70s until there were laws against it. Congress took action. Those have been undone. Uh, but in your local group, there's going to be some really, think about that really troublesome person who's always trying to start a fight. <laughs> you know, this is a tactic to send uh, agents in who look and dress like ordinary citizens, activists, but who are there to cause trouble, to make it difficult to move forward, to break up the group, to smear people. Surveillance and infiltration, it's the way the state messes with people's minds to make them psychologically unwilling to stand up for themselves or even trust their own reality. It's a psychological pressure point and not just a tactical one. The Bush administration says a president's warfighting powers include authority to detain enemy combatants, even when they're U.S. citizens. 